as you know, Rachel Lindsay, her husband, Brian, is divorcing her. And apparently, I'm being emotional. <laughs> the cousins are letting me know, Cousin G, it is. You are being emotional about Rachel because you really like Rachel. And the cousins feel that when I really like someone, it clouds my judgment. And so the cousins decide that they're going to bring me down memory lane because apparently I forgot that Rachel really wanted Peter and she only chose Brian because Rachel brought Peter didn't want to propose. And I was like, So I have a few cousins that emailed me. They can't comment publicly publicly because they're high profile. So they email me. And so uh, one especially cousin T, thank you for your Christmas present. Oh my God, it's so warm and nice and cuddly. Oh my God, where did you get that? So nice. She feels that I'm being emotional about Rachel because I like Rachel. And when I like someone, it clouds my judgment and I can't really see. And this is true. This is true, y'all. This is why you can't get too close to people, those people in the prophetic ministry, because it clouds your judgment, okay? And it's coming back to me now that Rachel really, really wanted Peter, but Peter was not ready to propose to her. Also, some people feel that they're not feeling sorry for Rachel because she only wanted white guys. She only dated white guys. And she only wanted a white man. I don't have a problem with black women wanting white men. Personally, I don't care. For me, it doesn't matter to me because there is just not enough good black men to go around. We never talk about the number of black men in jail. We never talk about the number of black men who are Pookie's rarest Tyrone Dusties who are not able to play their roles as husband. And so for me, for Janice, I do not have a problem with black women dating white men. As a matter of fact, I encourage it. As a matter of fact, somebody sent a video to me of another YouTuber talking about me, saying she's, um, she's semi-divestor. Yes, I encourage black women to date black other men than black men because there's not enough good black men to go around. However, a black man cannot say you can find enough black women, good black, because there's so many black women that can't find a good black man for that one person is talking about me, but that's all right, girl. <laughs> Does she have a husband, cousin? The person that was talking about me, you know, with the Naomi Osaki video. Does she have a a good husband? Mm -hmm. But you know, I stay out of YouTube BS, child. I don't get into it. Also, for those of you who are in your emotions about what I said about Rachel Lindsay, I am going to tape put the interview below. I thought I did it on the other video. I'm going to put the interview below so you can watch it yourself. So you could stop being emotional. How you know she didn't talk to her husband? She said she didn't talk to her husband. How you know she slept with, she only slept with Peter? No, she didn't. I mean, oh, she only slept with Brian? No, she didn't. And I did not say she slept with all the men on the show. I said, she said, fantasy suite, we already know. Only the top two or three guys go to the fantasy suite. So get out of your emotions. But I will link the video below. I just can't play the video because it's another YouTuber video and I can't afford no strikes. I did play a few snippets and so far that's okay. All right? So I post the video below. Also, also, 
Cousin T sent me the text message from Peter's ex-girlfriend that Peter was really on the show to get famous, not because he really wanted to get married. And that's what I hate about these shows because you don't know if the person is really there because he really wants to get married. Because you all know when you go on The Bachelor, Bachelorette, if you make it to the top three, top two, you are expected to propose. But Peter wasn't ready to propose because T sent me the article. She is so... Like, here it is, read it, girl. <laughs> so we're going to go to People Magazine. This is from a years ago. And we're going to go to another article where Peter was just not ready to propose to Rachel. Rachel wanted him to propose. He was not ready. So the safe guy was Brian. And, and now it's making sense why she don't really have time to do Brian, don't want to do the duel with him. Because she really wasn't, she really didn't want him. She wanted Peter. I bet you if it was Peter, she would be letting it all hang out every day and every night. But because it's the safe guy that she's like, oh, here we go again. Here we go again. He wants it. It's making sense to me now. Be sure to subscribe, my darlings. Thank you for your love and support. My name is Janice. Welcome and shout out to all of our new cousins. I absolutely adore you and I thank you. Be sure to subscribe, thumbs up and share this out and let me know what you think. Watch the interview and go back on that because I, I 2024, I got time to fight with emotional people, okay? <laughs> I just don't. I can't do it. I don't got time. So let's go to this article from 20... She said, you remember how disgusting that kiss was with Brian? 2017. Okay. Hometown visit with Peter. Peter was so handsome. Ooh, that salt and pepper. Yeah, honey. Gets me every time. Up next was Peter, and we can all take a moment to appreciate his glorious salt and pepper. Like, it's really, really working for him. After a good old makeout, <laughs> after a good old makeout sesh was out of the way, Peter showed Rachel around his hometown of Madison, Wisconsin. First on the agenda was drinks at his favorite local bar, but he decided to surprise her with four of his close friends. And yes, two of them were black. Peter has black friends. They took a moment to laugh about how silly it was that they even found themselves discussing the fact. He's so handsome. But do you th do you think Peter look a little feminine to y'all? But anyways, but the un the one little thorn in Rachel and Peter's love story thus far is the fact that Peter isn't quite sure if he's ready to get engaged. So why did you go on the show? I've gotten to know her fairly well and realize there's definitely a connection there, but I don't know her outside of this, he admitted. I don't know her on a daily basis. I don't know what it's like to wake up next to this person every day. The idea is in three weeks from today, I should be able to get down on one knee and propose to her. And it's effing terrifying because I want to do that once in my life, and I don't want there to be a shadow of doubt when that day comes. Can I say that's a good man? Well, let me not say he's a good man. That is a good thought to have for marriage, right? Like, I'm only doing it one time. That's how I was. I was like, listen, I am only walking down this aisle one time to get married. I'm not walking down this aisle again. If I walk down the aisle, it's to renew my vows, but I'm not walking down this aisle to go get married again. I am getting married one time. So for me, I had to make sure 
that he was the right person for me to the best of my ability because I am not getting married more than one time. And so I think that is a good thought to have. Like, it is terrifying. I only want to propose one time and I must make sure that this person is right for me. I don't see anything wrong with that. Do y'all? Michael. Michael Jr. I hate when he say, hold up. Hold up, mommy. Oh, I hate it. Hold up. Hold up. Hi, Michael. Do you want anything from Duncan? No, I don't want anything from Duncan. I, I, I would like a kiss, though. Uh-uh. Put it on the cheek. Hold up. And, and I, I think that people who say to themselves, I, I only want to do this once, are going to be more careful in choosing their mates. Okay. Uh, he said, because I want to do that once in my life and I don't want there to be a shadow of doubt when that day comes. Like you want to be sure you want to know that, you know, that, you know, that this is the person I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. I don't see anything wrong with that. All very legitimate concern, of course, but it just so happens that getting engaged at the end is very premise of the show. Exactly. Regardless of people, Regardless, Peter brought Rachel home to meet his family, introducing her to his mom, Lynn, his dad, Gary, and brother, David, as well as David's wife, Brooke, and their two youngs. Uh, so obviously, this is a Christian family, okay? Peter and David, you know that. One name you could overlook, but two kids have two Bible names, so it's a Christian family. Mm, mm, mm. Surprisingly, Peter's family was as warm and sweet as could be. And it all went swimmingly, except when Rachel asked Lynn whether she felt that Peter was ready for marriage. According to Lynn, Peter is ready to be committed to one woman and start a family with her, but he might not be ready for the official vows just yet. Lynn, is you saved, Lynn? Is you saved? You know what? I think that water people, they have to act a certain way because they don't want us to think, you know, they're racist. So they're going to have to act warm and, oh, yeah, he's ready. Yes, he's ready. So let me read that again because I'm a little confused. According to Lynn, Peter is ready to be committed to one woman and start a family with her, but he might not be ready for, okay, okay. So he's ready, but he not ready. Is, <laughs> is that what that mean, right? He's ready, but he's not ready, okay? Am I translating that correctly? When they parted ways that evening, you could tell that Rachel was just itching for more from Peter if not an I love you, then perhaps at least an I'm falling for you. But alas, she didn't get it. And even Peter knew that wasn't ideal. I want things to move forward with Rachel, he said. But in order to get to that next step, I don't know what that's going to take. I'm not there yet. I think that's fair. I think it's fear, but I'm not there yet. Usually me, you're not the one. Men know, they know, I'm telling you, they know, they know that my husband just emailed me the other day. I took a screenshot of it and he said, I knew you was my wife. Is this it? 
they know. They know y'all ladies. So when a man, I'm not sure, I don't know yet. They know, you're, they, they know, they know you're not it. They just don't want to tell you that you're not it. And you will have to take it as a clue as they're not. But I'm okay with him saying, I don't know. Because that's actually a clue of him saying, I know you're not the one. We just, we just don't want to accept it. Right? We don't want to accept it. And we um we we want more from him. Okay, here is it. I love you and appreciate your support and love. You are best baby mama. I knew it when I asked you to marry me. We can talk about this. This is something, something that I'm telling, you know, I'm like, listen, uh, you have my full support. This is why I'm here for you. I am your support. I'm cheering you on. Go get it. Okay. <laughs> Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Go get your blessing. Go get, I said, whatever you need, whatever you need me to do to help you, to support you, to go get this, go ahead and get it, okay? <laughs> so ladies, I think Peter liked Rachel, but Rachel, he knew Rachel wasn't the one. The thing is Rachel really liked him and wanted him to be the one. Okay, so this article is from Reality TV, where a lot of commercials on here. But anyways, there's something I want to read. The Bachelor star Rachel is, I knew I was sending Peter Cross full when I walked into his hotel room. Bachelor star Rachel is in Peter Cruz, Cross, Cruz, goodbye on the finale was so brutal that viewers weren't even sure if they officially broke up. But Rachel says there was no doubt in her mind the relationship was over even before that conversation began. When I walked in Peter's hotel room at the end, I knew that I was going to send Peter home Rachel 32 instead and sisters to Peter. To people, during Monday's night finale broadcast, Rachel was shown visiting Peter's hotel room in Spain at the end of their last one-on-one -on -one date together. Rachel was trying to choose between Peter and Brian once and for all. And from a viewer's perspective, Rachel was looking for answers from Peter. She seemingly wanted to find out whether he'd be ready to propose marriage to her the next day. Once Rachel learned Peter's heart wasn't ready for an engagement and Peter realized Rachel wasn't going to budge on her stance of not wanting to leave the show with just a boyfriend, they mutually decided to part ways. But lo a long drawn out kiss and tears streaming down their faces seemed to indicate neither Peter or Rachel wanted to let go. During her interview with People, however, Rachel claimed her mind was already made up. The moment she knocked on the door of Peter's hotel room, at that point, I knew it was Brian. Rachel said, I did not want Peter to come to the proposal, pick out a suit, pick out a ring, prepare what he was going to say just to get down. Down, That was really important for me. When Rachel dumped Peter, both individuals bawled their eyes out. And Rachel questioned whether she was making a huge mistake. Their goodbye even include professional professions of love as both Peter and Rachel told each other, I love you while hugging and kissing. I was thrown off by Peter because up until that point, he had expressed that he wasn't ready to propose. Rachel said Peter was hesitant to pop the question because an engagement and marriage are one in the same to him. Wow. Peter only wants to get engaged once and he didn't want to rush such an important phase of his life. However, Peter told Rachel before the bachelor exit that he'd propose if it meant they could continue their relationship after the show. Peter expressed how he was more afraid to lose Rachel than he was of making a personal sacrifice for her, her happiness. When Rachel, when Peter, with Peter, I constantly got this push and this pull that 
what I hate so much is that it seemed like the reason that Peter wasn't the one for me is due to the proposal. And I think that it became such a big issue because that's what happened at the end of this. But there were other deep rooted issues in my relationship with him. Rachel told the magazine. Rachel also knew that if Peter's proposal proposed marriage against his better judgment, he may end up being resentful of her. And this is why Rachel is probably resentful of Brian because she didn't want it. This is what the cousins are saying. So does that mean Rachel's resentful towards Brian? The reason the goodbye at the end was so emotional, it's not that I didn't know what I was going to do. It was one that is hard to say goodbye to someone you care about. Rachel explained, there's no denying I didn't care about Peter. I just knew he wasn't the one for me. So she wanted him to propose and he didn't want to propose. The text message from the girlfriend that Peter wasn't there for all the right reasons. <clears throat> allegedly, 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 okay? So this is the girlfriend. Allegedly, don't you think it's a little selfish on your part to go on this show when this poor girl is looking for a husband and you have no intentions of marrying her? What if you took the place of a guy that could be her soulmate? This is the girlfriend, a legend, blue, and he's in gray. She doesn't need the show to find someone. I have just as much of a chance of unexpectedly fallen her i guess i don't know what success look like for you success oh falling like falling for her <laughs> oh my god this is terrible more money, more what? Remember the quote, when that fades in a year and no one care about that show, I just don't want to be standing there like, who are my true friends and family? So I will use my looks, kindness, and charm to advance my dreams for my career. Okay, I don't care about any of that. I didn't think you did. That's why I was asking what success looked like. I want to be supportive. So Peter wasn't there for the right reason. It just so happened. Like he said, his looks, his charm. Let's go back. His kindness looks charm to advance his dreams of and his career. That's why I say he look a little feminine to me. Granted, ain't nothing wrong, honey. Hello, there is nothing wrong. The Bible says Saul was tall and good looking. David was red and good looking. Rachel was shapely and pretty. Solomon was beautiful. Moses was, what's the word? Mo, Mo, he had a speech impediment. Rachel was, uh, Leah was ugly. Well, there you have it. There you have it. My heart still goes out to Rachel. My heart goes out to her. My heart goes out to, um, to Brian. And, uh, one of the other cousins says, Janice, when she went on that girl, girl trip with one friend, it was two of them went to Europe or wherever she said, girl, that was the nail in the coffin. They knew, uh, Brian was going to go file for divorce and he sure did. I, 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 I like them and I, I still wish them, uh, the very best. Well, hopefully she'll find somebody else. She's 38. Well, you talk about have, wanting to have babies, but technically people are saying now she don't want to have no baby. She want to have a, she want to be a, a Hollywood star. Anyways, I love you. Let me know what you think. Uh, come on back. I know I haven't done a show, strawberry video in a while, but girl, 
we shall see. Love you. Uh, remember, if you want to show me love and support, I just ask for love and support with my books. My membership is below. I'm going to be pumping up my Patreon again. Um, okay. I love you. Talk to you later. Bye.